Okay, so let's take a look at how ProSession attacks the, the whole uh, mixer and effect strip uh, feature. Okay, so what I've got here is a really cool Ableton Live set from a friend of mine, from uh, Ned Rush, who's another one of the uh, Isotonic uh, crew members. And it's a really cool generative free jazz uh, template. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm super impressed with it. It's got uh, sort of the drums that sort of run the whole thing. And then some really kind of cool jazz guitar-ish kind of thing, kind of like your piano-ish thing, Wurlitzer thing. Um, and some bass. And this cool kind of concert flute on top of it. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, Wurlitzer there, not guitar. I think it's got kind of a you know the bite to it that gives it kind of a. Anyway, um, okay. So let's use Pro Session with it. How would I approach this? Let's see. Um, I'm gonna go over here and grab. Uh, procession out of its uh, current uh, dif directory over there, and I dragged it to the drum rack, which I probably didn't mean to do. Uh, let's give it a second to load here, and I'm going to drag it instead over here to my master, and I'll put it over there, uh, just so I know where it is. Um, you can put it anywhere. Uh, basically, the procession tool itself is a uh, audio device, so it'll move anywhere, and I'm going to refresh it because uh, I moved it just to make sure everything is there. And just to show you how, how this works, right? It just works uh, exactly like uh, Session View in that regard. So generating some cool stuff in the background here. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's got an, uh, a generative uh, arpeggiator going on there, I guess, uh, really kind of taking over the show. Okay, so I've brought in the pro session here, and as I click on the different tracks, you're going to see the different names of, by default, um, with no key modifiers, you see volume panning, repeat. Uh, well, here we're seeing the first two effects, uh, the returns. Beat repeat, ping delay, and another beat repeat with uh, some kind of what resonant? Uh, let's see, what do we got? Resonators and some cool stuff. All right, so as we click on it, that's what we see uh, by default: uh, volume panning and send A and send B. But if you hold on the shift key, that's when we get interesting. We get into seeing the macro controls for the stuff on those tracks, All right? We see more interesting things. And if you hold down the caps lock, or you just hit the caps lock, I should say, that uh, puts it into uh, effect mode by default. So we just click on them that way. All right, now let's just take another look here. Okay, so you see drum rack and overdrive. Next track, we've got velocity, chord, MIDI effects, pitch. So a whole bunch of fun things there. Whole bunch on three, whole bunch on four, even more. And then we have our Beat repeat, ping pong delay, limiter. So lots of different devices on there. And even the compressor on the master. Probably have, yeah, another two beat repeats. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So we click on drum rack. We have our first uh, bunch of controls. And you see the same going on here and here. So what we might want to do, just to get a little bit of a e better idea what's going on, is we're going to grab the, uh, the procession HUD and throw that also on the track. And this way, it'll show me exactly what the devices are that I'm affecting here. So you can see note length, pitch, beat repeat, and so on. So I click on that one again. You'll see, show me, I have, oh, there's an overdrive on there as well. So let's set the overdrive to be the default one over here. So now when I click on it, I will be changing the overdrive, uh, the overdrive parameters. Turn that off, and let's trigger some drums. Okay, get the idea. I could just hit stop up there too. Okay, now one of the other things, uh, if you've seen some of my videos before, you may not have seen this feature. This is kind of a new thing. Um, it's not exactly a new feature, but um, it's a modification. Now I'm gonna make this wider here and you see there's still some activity going on in the other track there, but that's beside the point. I'm gonna make this wider. Now, 
I'm going to see more of those parameters. So you can see all the way two, four, six, I have eight parameters. Uh, two of them have nothing assigned to it. Um, so I can get at all of the parameters of that device. You see the same thing over here. So now let's trigger it. Try wet. Let's mess around with the tone there. And I could just change them over here in the HUD as well. But this way you can kind of just see exactly where they are. Let's turn that on now. So it really comes all down to uh, your parameter assignments on your devices, because just by default, those are the, the eight things that are going to pop up. You can get real creative, and like especially if we do things like look into some of the uh, audio effects here, like audio effects rack. Um, these are some fun ones. Performance and DJ. Say, oh, it looks good. Say the washed out. Uh, I'm going to put the washed out after the drums there. And this is kind of a one knob effect. You just turn that up and it washes out kind of thing. So let's go master again. Now you see I'm still not affecting washed out because I have this set to be um, the overdrive, but I'll say knob one washed out set. So now when I come over here, yep, there's the knob one washed out parameters. And all of those things, of course, they're all automation effects moves, so that would all be recorded in live. Uh, so everything uh, integrates completely normally with the, the, the live automation chain and all that. Um, but it's really just a convenient way to be changing all your parameters and performing with things more like, you know, kind of old days when we had like an analog desk and all the knobs were right there. So you didn't have to go through page after page after page to find, you know, the EQ, the uh, you know different effects parameters and all that kind of stuff. It was right there, you know, because it's sort of more of a sort of an effects strip kind of view. You know, everything is right there. And sometimes what I like to do is I just put like an EQ uh, on each track, and then so I, you know, from this view I could see, oh, you know, EQ low, mid, high, and you know, set things like that. And instead of just I don't want to do that, let's throw that right there. Oh, audio effects. Where's my EQ three? So maybe you set up your uh, template set where you put uh, EQ3 on every track. Let's say we'll do that. Okay. And to get that set by default to procession over here, because normally that's not where it is, we'd say, okay, EQ3 set. Come to this one. I'm going to do the same thing. EQ3 set. Uh, I already did that one, click on that one, double bass, EQ3, set, and concert flute, EQ3, set. Okay, so now every time I click on the track, I get my EQ3 parameters. So say we come back to my drums, and I'll play some drums. Turn that on, and I just want to do some... So get real creative with uh, setting up these sort of custom effect strip uh, racks. And you used to have to do that differently. In the old mixing tools, you know, all this stuff was sort of split up into the different tools. But now they're all, you know, just available by default right in there. And, of course, you can, you know, use XY mode and really kind of get, uh, create a lot of chaos. Excuse me. I'm, uh, probably, uh, anyway, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, really interesting joystick move, mode moves there. Turn the caps lock off again and uh, back to seeing, you know, sort of just my regular mixing view sort of thing. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoy using Procession.
let me know. Uh, send us uh, feedback, uh, how you're using the device. I'm always like uh, thinking up new features and new ways of using features based on user feedback, like uh, and especially you know borrowing uh, Ned's uh, free jazz set here really gave some ins inspiration. Hope you are inspired too. Take care.